Hi and welcome to Dear Andy, where every week we answer your college football and social media etiquette questions here on SI.com. Let's get right to the questions. The first one this week comes from Dan and he asked to discuss what more autonomy means for the Big Five. Well, if you've been following the NCAA news, you know that on Thursday the NCAA's Board of Directors approved a measure that will give a lot more autonomy to the ACC, Big 12, Big 10, Pac-12, and SEC, better known as the conferences with all the money. Basically, it will allow the moneyed conferences to give more to the athletes if they want to raise the level of the scholarship to the actual cost of attendance, which is in some cases two to six thousand a year more, they can do that. If they want to make a rule that says they can give gold bars to recruits, they probably won't do that, but they could if they wanted to. This is something the NCAA has wanted to do for a little while because it's getting sued out the wazoo by athletes who want a bigger cut of what has become a multi-billion dollar business. For the longest time, the idea in the NCAA was if we make enough rules, everything will be equal. Presumably, all these people also believed in unicorns. But the fact of the matter is, Ohio State and Ohio University are not really playing the same game in football. It's just different. They're on different levels, it, and that's okay. So, now they have some rules that make it a little more flexible. I don't know if it will stop all the lawsuits, but it is a step in the right direction, provided the entire membership passes it. We'll see if they figure it out. And what we get is a prime example of the golden rule. He who has the gold makes the rules. Our next question comes from Kirk and he asks, you gonna rank Texas way too high and Oklahoma State way too low again next year? Hashtag rhetorical question. Well, Kirk, indeed it is a rhetorical question because I'm not ranking anyone this year. I have bequeathed the AP poll voting duties to the great and talented Martin Rickman of SI.com. He'll be doing the power rankings as well. I will no longer be attempting to predict the actions of a large group of 18 to 22 year olds over a three to four month period. But Kirk brings up a, a sore point. Yes, last year I did rank Texas number 11 in the preseason poll, left Oklahoma State off the preseason ballot. That was incredibly stupid. Oklahoma State was a lot better than Texas. Should have been ranked a lot higher. But let's go through some of my greatest hits in my five year poll voting career. 2009, I had Ole Miss number eight. They were the trendy, trendy, trendy pick. Yeah. Jeff and Sneed, we hardly knew you. They went to South Carolina on a Thursday night, got whipped. Gamecocks fans discovered an eight-year-old Danish techno song called Sandstorm, and they've not stopped playing it since. 2010, I had Iowa, number five in the preseason. The Hawkeyes went seven and five. Thanks. And then 2012, number 12, Arkansas. Yeah, that Bobby Petrino stuff, that won't hurt the Razorbacks too much. John L. Smith will come in, he'll be just fine. Yeah, I was really bad at voting in that poll. But I'm telling you right now, Martin Rickman, he's gonna do better. And when he's wrong, you send him the email. Our next question comes from Rocky Top Saint, and it's one I get a lot. Why do you hate, insert any school? Well, Mr. Saint, I hate your school when well, I don't mean Tennessee, which is obviously your school. I hate all of your schools for the following reasons. One, I was too stupid to gain admission to your prestigious university. Two, I hold seven degrees from your rival. Three, I once asked out a girl from your school, and you know what she said? She said, I can't go, Andy. I have to stay home and watch National Geographic Explorer. And that is why I hate your school. But I don't hate your school nearly as much anymore than I'm not voting in the poll. Martin Rickman hates your school now. Our last question comes from Mike, and he asks, Dear Andy, why is Mark Emmert dumb enough to think a campaign like hashtag Ask Emmert wouldn't spectacularly backfire? If you were paying attention to the internet on Monday, you know that the NCAA put out a call for questions for the president, who was appearing on the Mike and Mike radio show on ESPN Radio. Why would you do this? Well, I don't think it was Mark Emmert's idea. And I'm pretty sure he wasn't very happy with the person whose idea it was because, look, Twitter is not the place to ask questions when you have a fairly unpopular position. I mean, seriously, why would anyone put out a call for questions on Twitter? That's like hanging a stake around your neck and walking into a pack of wild dogs. Why would anyone be stupid enough to do something like 
That, yeah. Turn that camera off and call my agent now.